the female genital mutilation or FGM has not been proven to have any benefit on the woman's or girl's life. Unfortunately, many women across the country are suffering because of this cut. Agnes, a resident of Naro County, explains to us what she went through during the cut as well as why she decided to start a rescue center at Narok for young girls who are running away from FGM. Karibu hapa kwetu Tasaro. Hai ni bomba ya wasichana ambayo tunawapea makao wale ambayo wanatoroka tohara na wale ambayo wanatoroka ndoa sa mapema. Kwa hivyo ningependa kukaribisha. Karibu. So hapa ni wapi exactly from hapa hapa tuko tu kwa area ya town na hii bomba inaitwa Tasaro. Wasichana huwa wanatorokea hapa ambayo eh, wanatoroka tohara na pia ndoa ya mapema. Tumekuja kugundua tena tena kwa jamii kumekuwa mashida mingi. Sasa hata ukiingia hapa utakuta kuna watoto wadogo. Na hawa watoto eh, wanaletwa kutoka kwa ofisi ya watoto. Kwa sababu Naro County. Kwa hivyo sasa sisi tunafanya kasi hapa kwa Naro County kwa jamii ambayo ni ya Wamasai kwa sababu bado hawa watu wanashikilia mila sao. Na mila moja ni tohara ya wasichana. Sasa hapa tunapambana na tohara na hii ni senda. Unaona kama pale sasa utaona pale ile nyumba ambayo wanakaa. Hiyo ndiyo domo yao, hostel yao. Pale utaona darasa. Tuko na darasa kwa sababu hiko saa tuna rescue watoto ambayo hawajaenda chule. Na tuna tuna haya mwalimu a qualified teacher anakuja kuwafundisha how to read and write and then from there on tunaweza kupeleka huyo mtoto wa primary school na atakop tu ni wengi wamekop na wale wengine na ni wengi hata wamefanya mtihani na wakapita kwa hivyo sasa ile area tena ni dining hall okay. there is a kitchen there these girls cook for themselves wakati kama huu hawasiana wako shule wanasoma sasa wale unaona kama wale hivi hawa ni wale wapi wamekuja juzi their cases are still either in court mm. au sa ingine bado wanatafuta wasasi wao. Mm. Na sasa mwingine mdogo kama yule unaona anasimama hapo. Mm. Hiyo sasa ni maajabu kwa sababu hii katoto mm. eh, ni kesi ya defilement. Mm. Amekuwa defiled mm. as young as she is hata mm. haelewi. Mm. Yeye anasema tu na umo na tumbo hajui. hajui ni nini lifanyika. Mm. Lakini kesi yake iko kotini mm. haka katoto kakaletwa hapa mm. kakawa defiled hapa for three months hii kesi yake ikiendelea. Kwa hivyo sasa unakuta kwamba ile nia tulianza nayo ya tohara inaanza kubadilika kulingana na mashida yale ya kondani ya jamii. Yeah. Eh. 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 So ni Eh, sasa zile ni classes. Hapa sasa ni dom. Hii dom unaona tunaita vide na tunaita vide kwa sababu kikundi cha vide ya kutoka Amerikani ndiyo walikuja kututembelea mm. na wakatupa waka fedha mm. tukaweza kujenga eh ina va, uh, violence. violence yes so yes standing against violence mm. na ndiyo wanajiita vide mm. sasa hapo tukaita tukaitanisha hii chumba kwa hiyo jina kwa sababu wao ndiyo walitupa fedha ya kufanya hivyo kwa hivyo sasa ndani ya hichi chumba eh, kunaweza comfortably kuwa na watoto 49 na tisa. Saa hii iko saa tunakuwa na wengi hata saa hii ni 49 na tisa, lakini wako kwa mashule. Tuko na wasichana mpaka eh, secondary schools na tuko na watoto wa primary. Hata saa hii tuko na watatu ambao hawako hapa saa hii labda watakuja wako kwa classes ya computer wale ambao ni wetu ambao walimaliza form 4. Wanapongojea pale wanaenda wanangojea university lakini tunawapeleka kwa kompyuta. Na hapa kwa hii program yetu 
tunakuwa na reconciliation program mm. because kama sasa tukiwa 42 mm. we must create room for mm. other new girls mm. sasa sasa hiyo tunaenda kwa wazazi mm. tunaongea na wao mm. and we are lucky because in our culture mm. that uh, element of reconciliation is there mm. kwa hivyo it's not we are not coming up with a new thing yeah. wa masai tu wasiana wangetoroka mm. wangetoroshwa wanarudi wanakuja wanaongea na baba yao wanakuwa accepted so these girls are normally accepted sasa kasi yetu ni ku monitor tu kuhakikisha wameenda shule yeah at a tender age of 14 agnes was forced to undergo fgm something that she despised ile shule nilikuwa primary school nilikuwa na rafiki yangu mmoja ambayo hakutaka kufanywa hajui tohara ni nini kwa hivyo alikuwa tu anakaa kiniuliza nini ni huwa anafanyika na hawa watoto wanakuja kama wamekatwa nywele sasa nilikuwa namuelezea kwamba kuna mila ambayo hawa watoto wanafanyiwa na ndio basi wananyolewa kumaanisha sasa wamekuwa watu wengine sasa alikuwa kila mara ananiambia nisikubali sasa nika keep hiyo promise ya huyo rafiki yangu sasa kwenda nyumbani kujaribu kusema hapana baba yangu tu ndiye alinisupport lakini mama yangu akasema lazima Regardless of trying to fight against being cut Agnes went through it simply because of the sheer fact that she was referred to as a coward Kwa sababu ilikuwa inafanywa against my will sasa nilikuwa nafuata process yote na sikuona maana yake na ndio maana mimi nikasikia lazima nianze kitu kama hii mimi hata sikujua kwamba my community itanichukia itani lakini the word sasa kwa age group yangu age mates watakuwa nasema wewe huyu ni muoga aliogopa kisu you see so i was under pressure na nikakubali after the cut agnes bled profusely for hours without any help and lucky for her even with all the blood lost she did not pass out but then the problem is everybody is drunk Everybody is happy, everybody is celebrating, they don't care what's happening to you. And then wakiambiwa mebili wanaanza kuulizana, nikina nani walipigana juzi hapa kwa hii nyumba? They think, sasa baada ya hawa wa mama kupigana, hiyo makelele ndi inafanya ubilid. So this is a community that is not doing anything because they hate you. Because it is a culture and they have been doing it and they have never associated hiyo kukatwa na any problem kama bleeding kama I, they forget even that there is pain and the pain that one undergoes inakuwa severe pains because there is an, no anastasia done on you ambayo itakuweza kukufanya ubea the pain so you are there and you everybody comes in she talks about you not crying usipigia wazee kelele so unaingia hapo ukiwa na the word i will not cry sitapigia baba yangu kelele so hata hiyo uchungu inaweza kukua because uwezi kuwilia yeah jinya geji yango binyi over the years she has come to discover that the practice is done simply because it has been there as part of our cultures and not because it has any benefit to the woman sasa tulipokuja kuanza that is when we now started interacting with the medics and na sasa tukaanza kuelewa kabisa where the cut is a clitoris that has its own function in the body sasa tukaanza kuangalia vizuri the effects of female genital mutilation with that new knowledge agnes with a group of women in narrow county decided to start a rescue center to help young girls from this vice as well as keep them in school na kwa kila nyumba ambayo tuliingia eh, tohara ilijitokeza ikawa tohara baada ya tohara hawa wasichana wanaozwa sasa hapo ndio tukajua tohara ni shida naye maendeleo anawake ikataka pia nao kuanzisha program kama hiyo ya kuelimisha hizi jamii ambayo zinafanya tohara ili wapate kuelewa madhara ya tohara sasa hapo ndio tulianza wote kuona kwamba baada ya tohara watoto wetu wanapotea
Agnes attributes their efforts of community outreach, along with the law that stands against the vice, to the reducing number of FGM practices. So when we started, we used to have a large group of girls running to us. But this time, they come one by one because everybody is aware. And again, the law that is there, that's the Children's Act, and that is the law in the new constitution. Hata hizo sinasaidia yote. Kila mtu kuogopa, taking a girl through FGM. She has managed to help over 5,000 girls escape the cut since she started the Tasaru Girls Rescue Center. After rescuing these girls, some of them like you hear me asking questions to these girls, some of them are confused. And especially if it was a decision that was not from her, maybe somebody pushed her to be rescued. Sasa, she's not sure whether she made the right decision or not. So I take my time joking with them and talking to them. Uh, when the girls are there and so many, we don't see any problem because there are other girls who can tell their own stories to the other girls. And then these girls heal. And then they cope with the life here. And then they mingle with the other girls. When a girl wishes to go back home, Agnes provides for a reconciliation ceremony for the girl and her family. In addition, they constantly monitor the girls to ensure that they are safe and in school. I just arrange with the chief of the area, with the leaders of the area, that I want to take this girl home. And with all the respect, I will do what it takes to be done. Because in our culture, a woman takes a blanket. At times, she gives a sheep to the husband or to the father. And then she's accepted back. And when we take this girl there, sometimes we have a, a document that we sign that they cannot take this girl through FGM again. And then after staying with this girl for long here, when she's living here, she will have her conduct and she will know how to get her way to where we are when anything is about to happen to her. Unfortunately, because some people don't consider FGM as a priority, Tasaru has not received any support from the community. Mm, well, when we started, there were so many problems. Because uh, the parents by then didn't know that there was a law that protect these girls. So a parent could not understand why you are taking the girl away or why the daughter is not there. And especially when the girl is about to be married, where this uh, her man will be richer than yesterday, then you are here denying him the riches that he was expecting. Then, of course, it's not going to be easy. There are so many uh, problems that are coming up in the community. So I think there is need to have um, a, a rescue centre in every county. Female genital mutilation has several health implications such as complications during childbirth and discontinuity of education in a child's life. Dr. Abdullahi Edan, a reconstructive surgeon at Karen Hospital, says FGM originated from ancient Egypt and permeated across the region. And if you look at FGM, it's not only confined to one particular religion. It's, it's, it's a multicultural practice. And, uh, it's been there for many decades and uh, a habit or a cultural practice which unfortunately has been uh, very unfair and uh, mean to young girls and women and uh, what happened is as, as, as they grow and reach puberty and post-puberty they they come with complaints complaints of you know some of them with severe FGM have what you call infibulation which basically means closure of the entire thing and you just leave a small space for, for menses. Uh, and that, that's really a horrible one, that's the most severe type. A girl or woman who undergoes FGM is usually prone to urinary tract infections, as he explains. During childbirth, they might be having problems, of course, because the, the, the exit is, is, is pretty small. Uh, issues to do with uh, uh, frequent uh, psychological problems, they, they really help. That's probably the number one uh, issue that they present with. 
they have issues to do with their self-confidence. They don't feel they're complete women. That's probably the consistent message I get whenever they come to me and say, Dr. Harry, I don't feel I'm a complete woman. They also get a lot of uh, bacterial infections and uh, that's in the severe form. In the other one, uh, the other minor forms of, of FGM, they might not get infection, but in the severe form of, of FGM whereby they close everything, uh, they're able to get, uh, they, they end up getting infection. Uh, some of the menses might even remain there and become a, 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 a center point of infection. In addition to this, FGM causes other extensive problems in a woman's life, including low self-esteem and marital problems. The woman uh, is actually being demeaned or degraded by her, her husband or her partner. Being told that you, you've had the cut, so you're not a complete woman. And that makes it even worse. And I've had few cases where I've contemplated suicide. That's as far as big as it goes. Uh, take it in this context. <laughs> Can you imagine all men have their glance penis, that is the tip of the penis, being cut. Imagine that for a second. The whole world will be in, 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 a, in turmoil, isn't it? Now that's exactly what's happening in, in, in females. According to Dr. Aiden, education is paramount in the fight against FGM, since for most communities there is no particular reason as to why they practice it. The roots where this problem emanates from, that's in the villages and all that. We go and emanate this uh, issue of FGM. It'll be very difficult to remove it. But if you, I've, I've asked a lot of questions. You know, I've spoken to the communities that practice this this FGM. The Kuriyas, for example, the Maasai, the Somalis, uh, Kikuis from Ranga and Meru and Embu, particularly Embu, which is very rampant, by the way, and uh, other areas. There is no particular reason why they do this, other than just to sort of belittle and to demean uh, the young child, uh, the, uh, a young woman. The fear is that she'll go out there and become adulterous, uh, while less on the other hand, the men are not subjected to this, so that's pretty unfair. Many women that see Dr. Aiden complain of not feeling complete as women and lack sexual satisfaction in their marriages. No one has a right to take one sensation over the other one. And uh, when a woman comes to, she doesn't have any of this, they have this complaint. Some of them have never enjoyed uh, their relationships with their, with their husbands. They have never enjoyed coita. Some of them find it as a, as a, as a problem when they are called upon uh, to meet with, with their husbands. And uh, they're sort of there to procreate, to have children. Uh, and that's again a cultural thing, using a woman to, to procreate only. She's entitled to sexual pleasure in my opinion and I'm sure in the opinion of anybody and uh, when they come to me that these are the main complaints they have but most of them uh, as they go to school they come to realize that their friends have not had this cut and uh, they feel now they're inferior uh, in their womenhood than those who have not had the cut. FGM reconstruction was first done by a French surgeon in South Africa who not only saw several women go through difficulty because of it, but also defined the different types of FGM practices based on the anatomy interference. What is normally cut is sort of a tip, what the, the, the mutilators see with the cuts, and therefore it sort of retracts back to the bone, and uh, it either closes up there, the skin closes, or it's actually stitched by some, some cutters. And therefore, uh, the real organ itself uh, could be hidden beneath the skin. And it's not visible, and you might not see it. Of course, the, the, the labias are all cut, and there's nothing much you can do ourselves, other than maybe uh, making uh, something like a labia by putting fat injection to make it look uh, like a labia, or the so-called so the lips. But the actual clitoris, once it's cut, goes back, and uh, we as plastic reconstructive surgeons, or those who practice this, uh, this kind of restorative surgery, I like to call it clitoral restorative surgery. We end up, we have to dissect, open the scar tissue which was there, dissect it with its blood supply and nerves, uh, bring it down by resecting a ligament which has been holding the clitoris up there. You resect it, you sort of elongate it, and you gain length, and you'll have your clitoris uh, at its normal uh, anatomy position, close to the to the birth canal. After the procedure, it takes a woman six to eight weeks to heal. 
55% increase in, in orgasm and 92% increase in sexual sensitivity. In, in, in medicine, what we say is even 10% is, is a success. And uh, when Pierre brought out his results, we were all excited about it. And indeed, we are replicating those results uh, on, on the basis of the data we are collecting so far. We have already operated almost more than 200 young women uh, since last May. And uh, we're getting very good results, uh, fantastic results. And if we can contribute a little bit, even if it's 1%, so be it, we will, we will do it. Uh, we tell the woman not to have uh, intimacy, sexual intimacy for a period of six to eight weeks. They sit on a seat's bath, normal, normal temperature, and we give them some uh, antibiotic cream, and we see them after a week. Thereafter, we see them again after six weeks. And of course, the most important thing is they must sit uh, on a bucket of water, room temperature, as a, as a way of dressing. You know, that's the best way to dress it. Last year, Karen Hospital started an annual initiative of reconstructing women who have undergone the cut. And this year, Dr. Aidan anticipated the program to run in July. It's going to be on a very low fee, you know, it's almost as good as free, pro bono. We're all doing this as part of community service, not because of anything. Uh, I do a lot of my work in reconstructive aesthetics, cosmetic, as well as other general surgery. This is purely a society commitment and uh, back, giving back to society. So yes, we'll keep on doing it. Fans permitting, probably would expect those surgeons to go out there in the Machinanis to go and operate on places like Kajado, Naro, Kuria, you know, places like Kisi, which is very common, Embu, pretty high, Muranga, massive, and all this, and even Northeastern, of course, which is the highest. During the anticipated program, Dr. Aidan notes that priority will be given to those from less fortunate backgrounds and those with severe cases of FGM. Those who can afford We'll ask them probably to come some other time, but we're looking at those who are very poor. We'll interview them. We'll see those who have been extremely affected by psychological problems, those who are almost nearing, uh, who have had issues of marital problems in their, in their marriage, and those who have contemplated suicide. Uh, we, we, we'll help those ones and, and pick up. And those who have had severe types, you know, a young woman who has had everything cut. There's even no, uh, there's no space for a baby to come out. Those are the kind of people we we'll target and those who are really suffering. So we'll pick, we can't operate. I mean, we've got 3.54 billion women in this country who have had the cut. We cannot complete all that. We'll just do a few thousand. This is just a beginning of a journey, hoping that after our generation of surgeons are gone, the next generation, the other generation, will be able to eradicate this, uh, help eradicate this. But I must emphasize, prevention is the way forward. Dr. Aiden insists that there is help for any woman who needs it, and communities ought to stop the vice that has also claimed quite a number of lives. Recently in Machakos County, a Dr. Tatu Kamma went to court seeking the legalization of FGM, stating that its illegalization infringes on the right of the communities who practice it. Agnes and Dr. Aiden firmly oppose this move by Dr. Tatu, saying that the culture has done nothing but demean a woman in the community. This is just a culture that came in out of nowhere. Nobody knows why it started. So we cannot agree with Kamau saying that FGM should be legalized. This is an outdated culture, a culture that should be, uh, this century should not be allowed to be going on. In any way, they practice female genital mutilation to girls that are below age. So it is not the decision of this girl to be cut, it is somebody who decides for this girl. I, I, was, I was puzzled, I was shocked. For me it's actually preposterous to even think of legalizing uh, FGM on the basis of trying to preserve some barbaric, outdated culture. Really stupid uh, argument. We, we certainly caught with, with this off. Some cultural practices support the gender bio violence, but we are in a modern society whereby we should embrace those who are both gender. We, when you look at FGM in all angles, from all angles, from all perspectives, it does not fit in the modern society. And even the purpose it was stated for, it was just an initiation process. There are so many ways in which the girl child can be educated to move from one step to the other. It does not necessarily mean 
through uh, that uh, the lady must pass through FGM for she to become a woman. No, that is not it. Narrow County Commander says that regardless of the limitations they are facing, they are well aware and support the children's and gender rights that stand against the violence. There were so many challenges because uh, the policemen also come from these communities. And maybe you are meeting a policeman who is already cutting the daughter. So when you go to talking to him, and I go, like in this year, ni milayenu. Iyo ni milayenu, sasa nyi mwendele nae. Si sasa tutafanya nini. So until you push him to make him understand that you understand the law. Sasa hapo ndi utapata usaidisi. But these days they are good, they are friendly. When you go there, they just say, Tasaro, what do you want? Iko shidagani leo. Remember there is Children Act. And the Children Act also caters for the gender. And so, these police officers have been briefed several times on matters pertaining to the, ch the child and matters pertaining to the girl child. So to me, they are doing enough. What you should bear in mind is that they are not everywhere. That is the only challenge. Police officers are not everywhere. And in some cases, unless a case is brought before a police officer, it becomes very difficult for a police officer to know those people who are being discriminated as far as the agenda is concerned. The area is diverse, and the practice is being carried out in the interior part of the county, which not every law enforcement organ is there. So unless these things are brought to the attention of the officers, the law enforcers, then it becomes very difficult for this officer to know that such and such a person is a victim of gender violence. He adds that engaging men more than women is key in the fight against FGM. Where it is being practiced, it is being practiced because the men in those communities are saying they cannot marry an literally dictomized lady. So this one abet the what? Abet the practice. So the best way to fight FGM to engage men more than even the women themselves. We, we expect a lot from the government. We, ha we, haven't, uh, we haven't officially reached into them. But I expect uh, to start with NHIF must uh, cover this without any questions. Uh, they must cover this as a, as, a, as a way of helping them. And we encourage women to go and get NHIF cards. You know, go and become a member of NHIF, pay your premiums regularly. And those who have had the cut would benefit from this in any hospital, whether private or government, uh, for, for, for them to be assisted. I think that will be the best way. We just have to ride over the, the NHIF, NHIF issue and, and help out here. Yeah. That's all we had for you today. Do remember to join me next week, same time, same place, as we look at the psychological implications of FGM on a woman's life. For Health Watch, I have been your host, Karen Chapkoyaj. <laughs>